Dumpster diving within the past years has gained so much popularity. For those who don't know what dumpster diving is, dumpster diving is basically when a group of people or a person will go after hours to a large corporation or a store and try to collect items that the store has thrown away that day. And there's actually a lot of promise in dumpster diving. There's been people that have found Apple products, electronics, thousands of dollars worth of makeup and clothes. And on January 7th, 2022, at around 8 p.m. in New Mexico, a group of teens were dumpster diving in the back of a JCPenney. So as these kids were dumpster diving, one of them actually notices that there's a black trash bag sitting at the bottom of the dumpster and it's moving. At first, these kids just thought that it was possibly a cat or a stray animal that have gotten stuck in there. The three kids were named April Meadow, Hector Juso, and Michael Green. And April had brought this bag out of the dumpster and and not only did she notice that it was moving, the bag was also whining. So as the three kids are huddled around this bag, curious to find what was inside, what they find is actually a living, breathing baby boy with the umbilical cord still attached. And this baby was wrapped in a towel and two trash bags and was just left there in the dumpster to die. April immediately begins wrapping this baby in the towel and tries to comfort the baby and wipe him off. And while April was taking care of the baby, Hector and Michael called the police. Hello, 911. Yes, uh, we just found the baby in the trash. We just found the infant child. Is it breathing? In the goddamn trash. Yes, ma'am. Hello? Hello, yes, ma'am. Can you tell me about the baby? Um, he still got his available cord and he's freezing cold and he's very, like, he's drained, like, he's very, very, very weak. When the police get there, they immediately take this baby straight to the hospital because at this point, this baby was very weak and gray. And the police immediately go into the JCPenney and obtain the security footage of that day to see who had put this baby in there. And what they find is around 2 p.m. that very day, they see a woman in a white Volkswagen Jetta pulling in front of the dumpster and then she gets out of the driver's side, gets into her back seat, pulls out a black trash bag and simply just tosses the bag into the dumpster simply as if it was trash so after tossing this black bag into the dumpster she gets back into her car and quickly drives off the owner of this vehicle was 18 year old alexis avila who was immediately found and arrested at her house that she shared with her parents and was taken to the station for questioning a quick little introduction before we get into the case my name is Haley elizabeth and if you don't know who i am this is my true crime podcast where once a week i sit down and i talk about all things true crime ranging from murders disappearances cults i even sprinkle in some mandela effects and conspiracy theory videos and so if you're interested in any of that you can subscribe to the youtube channel for the visual version every wednesday or head over to spotify apple wherever you can find podcasts every tuesday for the audio version now with that being said let's get into today's case the case of alexis avila at the top of the interrogation alexis is asked by the detective why she thinks she's there and she replies with, quote, well, I can't tell you anything unless you ask me questions about it first. Which, right off the bat, this is a very big tell sign that Alexis has a premeditated story. The fact that she wouldn't give the interrogator a timeline is very suspicious. So instead of telling her story from beginning to end, where there's a lot of possibility for errors or her screwing up, she's a lot more just comfortable answering questions. The detective starts off by telling Alexis, well, we do know know that you were pregnant. And that's when Alexis immediately replies that she actually found out she was pregnant only the day before. Alexis then begins to explain that back in September of 2021, she got into a really bad car accident. And because of that, she suffered a lot of back pain. And so for the past couple of months, she's been experiencing really, really bad back pain, but she just assumed it was because of the accident. She said that she took herself twice to the ER because of the pain, but both times they didn't really 
really say anything about it. All they did was just prescribe her some medication. Both times she had done testing, even took in a urine sample, and she said that both times she went, the doctors just said that there was nothing really wrong with her. The detective then calls Alexis out. They actually spoke with her best friend named Walker that very same day. The police find out that Alexis actually told Walker a couple months ago that Alexis was pregnant, and not only was she pregnant, she didn't want the baby. And to this, Alexis just is super confused. She tells the interrogators that she has no clue who a Walker is. She's never heard of her. She doesn't know who she is and that she never told any of her friends that she was pregnant because she had only found out she was pregnant the day before. Back in March, you know, is when you spoke to some people and you told them that you were pregnant. So you had prior knowledge, all right? So I'm not going to... Back in March? Right, you know. No, somebody I by the name of Walker, do you know anybody, a friend of yours, a school friend of yours Walker. that I spoke with and she's the one that told me that you knew that you were pregnant Walker. and no, that you Walker. did not want the child? Walker. Mm -hmm. Her mom is a nurse at, a, at the hospital. Walker. Mm -hmm. I don't she's know a friend Walker. of yours. You don't know anybody by that name? No. No? Not a Walker. Okay. And so the detective starts to try to get a timeline from Alexis and asks her, you know, what have you been doing all week? How long did this back pain start? And while the interrogator is talking to Alexis, although Alexis is sort of giving attitude to the interrogator, the interrogator remains very easygoing and friendly. And I think he is doing this approach as a way to allow Alexis to open up. Maybe if Alexis doesn't view him as an authority figure, she would feel more vulnerable around him. Alexis goes on to say that she hadn't been in school all of that week due to stomach problems. And on that day, she had actually called into work because of her stomach problems. But the investigators would later find out that Alexis wasn't just not in school for that one week. She was actually not in school for an entire month at this point because she had taken the week before winter break off. So she didn't go to school that week. And then it was two weeks for winter break. And then the week after winter break, she again took took the whole week off. And so Alexis goes on to say that on that day she had woken up, but she's not really sure what time she exactly woke up because she had been on and off sleep all night because of her stomach problems. But in the morning when she woke up, she realized that her dad was still home from work. So she goes to her dad and she complains about her stomach problems. And that's when her dad goes out and buys her like digestion pills in order to help her go to the bathroom. She just remembers taking these pills and then going to sleep straight afterwards. And at this point, although Alexis isn't giving a beginning to end timeline, she honestly just slips up for no reason. The detective will literally ask her something so simple such as, quote, okay, so what next? Asking Alexis to explain what she did after she had taken the pills and went to sleep. And Alexis replies with, quote, what do you mean? This is, again, highly suspicious because it basically seems as if Alexis is saying, like, what do you mean? What did I do next? As if she's eager for the detective to bring up her baby. So she could just tell her lie, tell her story of what happened and get it out of the way so that she doesn't have to think about it anymore or even be on edge about it anymore. But in doing that, she's screwing up simple questions and making herself look really, really suspicious. She could also be responding with what do you mean as a way to delay her responses so that she has more time to think about it. And after that, what does she do? What do you mean? I mean, do you, you have no idea what happened. I mean, well, obviously. yeah, but like I'm, I'm trying, I can't tell you if you, like I'm not a very good explanation. Okay. So obviously you gave birth to a child. Right. We're, I'm trying to find out where it happened, how it happened, or what led to that and stuff like that. Uh. And so after Alexis asked the detective, well, what do you mean? What did I do next? He just says like, okay, I'm not trying to accuse you of anything. I simply just want to know the timeline. Like, I know you were pregnant and you had a baby. You know you were pregnant and you had a baby. So the detective is simply just trying to figure out the who, what, when, and where this baby happened. And at this point, Alexis, 
Alexis before explaining how she gave birth to her baby. And when she gave birth to her baby, she weirdly looks up at the camera in the interrogation room. Throughout the interrogation, she does this a couple of times where she will look up at the camera in order to remind herself that she's being recorded. And so she needs to be very, very careful about what she's saying and also to remind herself that she's being watched. And so she basically looks at the camera and then she looks at the detective and gives him the quickest story in the world. I went to sleep and then I woke up and I went to the restroom and I was just trying and then um, it, it came out and I thought it was poop and then it, it, it wasn't. Okay. So you were where? And you're at your house? Yeah, I was by myself. You were by yourself? Yes. She said that that day she was having stomach problems and so then she went to the bathroom after taking that pill that her dad had given her. And so she goes to the bathroom and in trying to go to the bathroom, she thought that what had come out was feces, but instead what came out was a living, breathing, crying baby. And so in a panic, she says that she immediately gets up and cleans herself off and puts the baby on the floor next to the toilet. And then at this point, Alexis starts to choke up a little bit when she's recounting all of the memories of giving birth to her baby. And she explains that she had just recently turned 18 and her mom didn't know, her dad didn't know about her pregnancy. And she was really, really scared of her mom finding out because she didn't want her mom to hate her because she had hid her pregnancy from her mom. And what's really eerie about this interrogation is that although all while Alexis is explaining this, her voice is all shaky and she's crying when she's talking about the baby and what she did after she gave birth she said that she quote just wrapped it in a towel and as you can tell from that she refers to her baby as an it as if he's an object and so the detective then tells alexis well if you were so scared about your baby why didn't you call the fire department or why didn't you drop him off in front of a police station or even call the police and her response to this was that she was just so scared and she was panicking because she had just turned 18 and she's still so young and that she didn't know what to do because, quote, it was out of nowhere. And the detective then tells Alexis, how could you be so scared that it came out of nowhere when you already knew you were pregnant? Like, you knew this baby was coming. Why were you so surprised when it did then? And then after this, Alexis starts to stumble on her words a little bit and she weirdly just ignores what the detective just said and then she continues to tell her story cleaning i was scared i didn't know what to do okay and i just wrapped it in a in a, in a towel okay did you ever thought of contacting you know an ambulance a fire no, department go out there and no, check I you did, out i didn't do it i was scared i didn't know what to do okay scared of what exactly the, the baby I just, like it was nowhere Right, but you're telling me that you knew yesterday, right? Yeah, but I didn't know it was, I didn't know how, and I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. After explaining that she had put the baby in a towel, she then said, quote, and I just put it where I put it. Again, she's trying to kind of delay the truth and giving herself more time to think of a response by saying just filler words. At this point is when Alexis slowly starts to confess to actually what happened. She says that after wrapping the baby in the towel, she had put it and she continues to call the baby an it. She says that after putting it in a towel, she then puts it in a black trash bag and and then puts it in another black trash bag. And then she put it in the back of her car and started driving around. But Alexis kind of slips up a little bit because as she's explaining this part, she accidentally says that the trash bags were already in her car. Oh, I had the trash bag in the car. Okay. If you couldn't tell the car is messy. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I put it, I did. So. And then I put, <sighs> I, I put it in I put it in the bag 
I took it to the car. Now, I know that some people have trash bags in the back of their car because it's like easier to clean out your car, but coming from what Alexis did and her situation, this does not seem like that. This seems like it was premeditated. And so the detective is literally not buying any of this. And he's saying, how could you not know that you were pregnant for nine months? Like that genuinely does not make sense. And Alexis tries to defend her case and she says that she only found out yesterday. And the detective is like, clearly you would have seen yourself gaining weight because the difference between having a baby bump and gaining weight is two completely different things. When you have a baby bump, your stomach is very tight and round because there's a baby in there. But if you were just simply gaining weight, it would not look the same. And there's also so many other things to pregnancy, such as hormone imbalances. You would have even felt the baby kicking and moving around in her stomach. Hello everyone, don't worry, it's still me just thanking the sponsor of today's video, Shopify. Now, as a lot of you guys know, starting a business is not easy and it's 10 times harder when you have to do it alone. Good ideas always come from collaboration. And there's been a couple of partners in crime that have gotten it done, such as Watson and Holmes, Cagney and Lacey, the Hardy Boys. But what makes the perfect partner when it comes to growing your business? That is you and Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the real first life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? <laughs> Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you are selling sleuthing supplies or marketing mystery merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers and the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. Shopify helps you sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. And I personally, add aside, like I really do love Shopify and genuinely every single person that I've met that does use Shopify have always said great things about them. I feel like Shopify compared to a lot of other large corporations genuinely really do care about their business owners. They're always staying really connected with their community and always giving back to their community. And I don't know, I just feel like that's one of the main things that I really look for in certain companies that I decide to put my services into. But you always wanna just work with a company that is for you and by your side every step of the way. And I feel like Shopify really does do that. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of others entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash behind. And now grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash behind. Thank you once again to Shopify for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to your episode. And he also called her out and said that if she really took a urine sample at the hospital, it would have showed quite clearly in the urine sample that she was pregnant. Usually when women come into like doctors with back problems or stomach problems or anything like that, the first thing they look for is to see if the woman is pregnant. Not just because, you know, sometimes having a kid can cause those things, but just in case when they're prescribing you medicine or giving you certain things to do to get better, it doesn't harm your pregnancy at all if that woman is pregnant. The detective literally calls her out and says, you definitely knew you were pregnant. Afterwards, Alexis just laughs. Wrap around a newborn inside a trash in bag. In a panic. I, I'm, right. I just turned 18. Right, right. It's not like I've been 18 forever. Exactly. She starts saying that I didn't know about like being pregnant. I've never been pregnant before. I just turned 18. And that isn't an excuse that she uses throughout this entire interrogation. I bet you I can count on about five hands the amount of times that she has mentioned that she just turned 18. And she also said at one point that she hasn't been 
been 18 all her life as if to justify her actions by saying that she's just a kid, so it's fine. As if to say that she can't tell between right or wrong because she's still a minor, sort of. And I'm assuming Alexis brings up her age every chance that she can get because this is her way to show that she has a lack of knowledge or that she is very immature in hopes of lessening the consequences that she will get for her actions. And so the detective once again calls her out and says, I don't care if you're 18. I don't care if you were 28 or 12 years old. Throwing out a baby, a live breathing baby that you just gave birth to, that's not normal. Like that is not something of like, oh, I'm just a kid. It happens. Like, no. He tells her this and oh my God. Okay, so it's not, you know, it's not normal behavior from any reasonable person to do what you did. If I'm, what you do you know, mean? it's not. In a panic when I just turned 18. Right. It still isn't though. We're talking about a baby. Well, I know, about... I know what you mean, but like, I'm, I get what you mean. So at this point, the detective is kind of at the brim. He's kind of had it. So he leaves the room and he leaves Alexis. He gives her time to clear her head. But before he leaves, Alexis asks the detective if she could see her mom or if her mom could be in the room when he's asking her these questions. And he just straight up tells her, well, you're 18, you know? If you were a minor, then yes, that would be against the law, but you're an adult, so you can handle this on your own. So Alexis now gets time to herself before the detective enters back in and when Alexis is revisited by the detective, at this point she starts to slowly confess a little bit more about what happened. She admits that she did drive to a dumpster but she doesn't call it a dumpster, she just calls it a trash can as if to minimize the effect of what she did but she did drive to the dumpster and she put her baby in the dumpster and she explains that after that she said that she drove around for a couple of hours trying to clear her head and she didn't know where to go or what to do and so eventually she just went back home and then when she went back home she sat on her bed and she was just sitting there trying to process everything that just happened and so at this point the detective gives Alexis an update on her baby and he basically just tells her that the baby was found by a group of people and that baby was then taken to the hospital where he is currently recovering but from the looks of it it looks like he he's actually going to make it through. And to this, Alexis gives a sigh of relief and she completely switches up and she says, well, if the baby's okay, then I want the baby. Mind you, when she says this, she doesn't even call the baby the baby. She says, I want it. She is still calling her baby an it. Reason your actions, that's what I'm trying to find out. Oh. Yeah, a reason behind your actions. I, I I knew I was too young, but I knew I would be able to do, like, I'm about to graduate school. Mm -hmm. School's not my worry. I have a stable job. So I would be able to, I, 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 if the baby's okay, I want it. Good. And what if I told you the baby was dead? What would change then? <laughs> Nothing. And her giving a sigh of relief could also just be her giving a relief to herself, knowing that she'll probably just go to jail for child abuse instead of murder. And I think it's crazy how she is giving a sigh of relief and all of the sudden she wants her baby back when the entire interrogation, she never once mentioned her baby directly. She never asked what he was doing, how he was, how he was found. She never mentioned it once. She was basically basically just waiting for the detective to mention him so she could just give a sob story and try to get out of there as quick as possible. And so the detective asks Alexis, well, when you got home and you were sitting on your bed, why didn't you have a change of heart? Why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you call a fire department? And Alexis just says that she was in so much shock, she could not bring herself to do something like that. And it also made it worse that at this time, both of her parents had come home from work and neither of her parents knew knew about the pregnancy and neither of them knew that she gave birth. Alexis then tries to manipulate the detective into making the detective think that he's the one not making sense and that she's the one being totally honest and clear. Did you just think um, you would be better off without a child because you're too young? No, I, 
Wait, mean, wait. Sorry, go back to What do you mean? Uh, what's I'm trying to reason like as far as my, what like what is what is in my head? Or like what do you I'm trying to reason your actions. That's what I'm trying to find out. Oh. And at this point, Alexis, again, slowly starts to confess. And she says that she kind of knew, and she uses air quotes when she says that. She said that she kind of knew she was pregnant back in August, months and months before this. Go ahead. Then cha it changes things because I don't, I don't appreciate that. Right. I found out I was pregnant yesterday. Okay. Because I heard it. The doctor showed me. I knew back in whenever, but I didn't know. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, it's whatever. She said that she had a feeling that she could have been pregnant, but she never actually went to the doctor, and so it was never confirmed. She said that the first time she had ever went to the doctor was the day before. She had actually drove herself to the ER the day before all of this because of her back pain, and when she went there, that is when she was being told that she was pregnant for the very first time, and they didn't tell her a due date or anything, and so she wasn't expecting the baby to come the day after. And also, side note, when she says this, she says, says that she wasn't expecting it to come today. So once again, she is still referring to her baby as an object. And so at this point, the detective knows enough information. He clearly doesn't know beginning to end, but he knows a good majority of what happened. And so at this point, he kind of drops the friendly act with Alexis and becomes a little bit more confrontational. So he actually interviewed Alexis's mom shortly before Alexis, and he found out that back in June of 2021, around the same time that Alexis found out she was pregnant, she actually ran away from home and was sending a lot of suicidal text messages to her mom, saying very concerning things such as she was finally going to be with God. And at this point, Alexis just goes quiet. She doesn't say anything because at this point, she's realizing that the detective actually knows a lot more than she thought he did. And I guess at this point, she's also kind of realizing that she's not the only person the detective is talking to. So she kind of just looks at him with a blank stare. She's really unsure what to say. And it was suspected that around this time in June, Alexis found out that she was pregnant. But if you do the math, if Alexis found out that she was pregnant in June, she would have had the nine month pregnancy and then gave birth in March. But instead she gave birth in January at the seven month mark. And the reason why she could have had her baby prematurely was because usually when mothers tend to neglect their babies or act as if their pregnancies don't exist, that then and causes a lot of premature births or even miscarriages. But in this case, Alexis did not have a miscarriage and instead just had a very premature birth. This could also be due to her not going to regular doctor visits or doctor checkups and just overall not taking care of herself. I also wanna put in there real quick, this is not the reason for all premature births or all miscarriages. Unfortunately, sometimes women could be doing everything right. They could be having the perfect pregnancy and they still have a premature birth or a miscarriage. Sometimes it doesn't even depend on what the mother is doing. It's just sometimes it happens, but I'm pretty sure in Alexis's case, she wasn't taking care of herself and that's why she had her baby premature. And so the detective then tries to switch up the conversation a little bit and he now is talking about Alexis's baby's father, who was 16 year old Steven Astorga. And according to Alexis, the two had actually been dating for about a year and a half. She said that the two of them had broken up around August of last year, which is ironically around the time that she knew she was pregnant. And so the detective is continuously trying to figure out a motive for all of this, why Alexis didn't want the baby and why Alexis didn't go to the doctor or tell anyone. And once again, before Alexis explains herself, she looks up at the camera to again, remind herself that she's being watched and she needs to be very careful about what she says. Alexis then goes on to to say once again that if her baby is still alive, she wants her baby back, she wants to take care of it. And this could honestly just be a desperate attempt at Alexis trying to undo what she did. But if you are throwing your child into a dumpster with the umbilical cord still attached, that is evil and dark and you do not deserve to be a mother. And it's also Alexis's desperate attempt not to go to prison because she actually got caught for what she did. Because I honestly think that like say Alexis 
threw her baby into a dumpster that had no surveillance cameras. Like it was just in the back of some random place. Most likely Alexis would have never went to the police. Most likely she would have never turned herself in. She would have never told her parents and she simply just would have went on with her life as if nothing happened. But the fact that she got caught, now she's crying and now she's remorseful and now she wants to keep the baby. And it seems like all of the sudden she's having a change of heart because once again, she got caught. As we reach to the end of the interrogation, Alexis repeatedly asked the detective if she could see her mom and if her mom could be in the room with her. She also says that she needs to go to the hospital and if her mom can drive her to the hospital. And the fact that Alexis is asking about her mom and asking for her mom is kind of contradictory to what she was talking about earlier when she said that she didn't want to talk to her mom because she was scared that her mom was going to hate her for hiding the pregnancy or that she was so scared to tell her mom, but now all of a sudden she wants to be around her. And furthermore, she wants her mom to take her to the hospital. And so it kind of looks like that she might have told her mom about the pregnancy and developed a very close bond with her mom because of this pregnancy. And that's why she wanted to be with her mom so bad because her mom is the only person that she could honestly be truthful to. Whereas the detective, she has to be very careful and walk on eggshells about what she says. And then the following day on January 8th, 2022, that's when Alexis was taken to the hospital for a checkup. Alexis, reminder, just gave birth that day. And when you give birth to a child, there is a lot of things that go on in a woman's body, such as sometimes when women give birth, they tear open and those tears then need stitches. And if not stitched up, it could cause infections and other worse medical conditions. She also said that she was having insane stomach problems. Now those stomach cramps and stomach problems that she was having was probably just contractions. But once again, the aftercare of birth is very important. And so that's when she sent off to the hospital for a checkup. But immediately after her hospital visit, she was arrested and charged with first degree murder and felony child abuse, as well as being tried as an adult. And what do you know, Alexis decided to plea not guilty to all of them. She's literally caught in 4K cameras behind a JC Penny, and she's gonna try to say she didn't do anything? She's innocent, don't worry. Like those videos, don't look at them. If you close your eyes, it's kind of like it never happened. And on April 13th, 2023, the following year, that's when Alexis's trial began. Now, if you guys wanna watch the full trial, I'll leave it linked down below. It's around five hours long, but Alexis's portion and as well as the baby's father's portion, both of those are located at the end of of the trial. And so if you want to check out the full, I definitely recommend it. Again, it will be linked down below. But since I can't really show a five hour interrogation, I am just going to give you the highlights of what she said, which if I'm being honest, isn't much because even at her trial, she continues to tell the judge and the jury that she doesn't know what happened and she still doesn't remember. A year later in the trial, she says that she's been consistently going to therapy as a way to heal herself from the situation, she still says, I don't know and I don't remember to simple questions. Get work for the rest of the day. Mm, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Why not? I don't remember. But you remember being at work? Yes. Okay. Um, earlier you told us that part of your work duties involved moving boxes. Was that day any different? Um, I don't remember. Okay. Do you know what time you left work that day? Somewhere around 7.15, 7.30. Is that your regular time that you leave work? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So then you leave work and then you went away. Where did you go after work? Um, either to my brother's house or to my house. Do you think you would have gone to your brother's house? Um, I think they made some kind of, um, food. Okay. 
okay. Alexis then goes on to say that the day before she gave birth on January 6th, that's the day that she found out she was pregnant because she had gone to the ER shortly after blacking out due to her back pain. And when she went to the doctor, that's when she found out for the first time that she was pregnant. And after going to the hospital, she ended up going to her brother's house to hang out with her family for a little bit. And at this family gathering, she told no one she was pregnant. She said that on the day she gave birth, she was up all night going to the bathroom. And when she woke up, she doesn't really remember what time, but her dad was home from work. And so she was telling her dad about her stomach issues. He went out, he got her some stomach pills. She took some and went to sleep. Shortly after she woke back up and her dad was still home and she heard her dad get out of the bathroom and then leave the house to go to work. And that's when Alexis went back into the bathroom. And when she did, that is when she gave birth to her baby. When he got up the restroom to leave, um, that's when I went into the restroom. Okay. So this time around where you went to the restroom, what happened? Um, I delivered a baby. How did that happen? I don't remember. Um, I just remember sitting there. Um, in the toilet bowl or on the floor? So, what were you thinking in that moment? Um, I was in shock. Um, like, how could this happen? So what did you do? Um, I don't remember. What was the next thing that you remember? Um, I think when me and my mom left the police station to go to the hospital. Prior to the, the police station and going to the hospital, you don't remember anything that happened in that space. You know that. Alexis claims at this point that after giving birth, she had a blackout episode. Now, this is very, very, again, contradictory to what she was saying earlier, because at the trial, she supplies no details. All of the details that she gave at the interrogation, the part where she gave birth, and then afterwards, she took the baby out of the toilet and onto the floor. She wrapped him up in a towel and then wrapped him up in garbage bags. All those very descriptive details that she said Alexis all of the sudden doesn't remember and she says that she doesn't remember what happened after she gave birth basically just like ignoring everything she just said in the past she threw the baby in the back of her car drove around threw that baby into a dumpster and then continued to drive around for hours until she went home and then the police found her and arrested her all of those details she weirdly just doesn't remember at the trial she never mentioned it. She says, I don't remember, or I can't recall, or I can't tell you. And it was also made known at the trial that yes, Alexis did get into a car accident back in September of 2021. And yes, she did have back problems, but Alexis definitely knew that she was pregnant already because after her car accident in September, she was given medication, but shortly after she was taken off that pain medication and put onto a different medication specifically because she was pregnant. The doctors told Alexis that they were switching her to a different medication because the pills that she was currently taking could be bad for her pregnancy and so they were putting her on something a little bit better. And so Alexis 100% knew that she was pregnant at that point but again dismisses it and pretends like she didn't know. Before you went to work, before you left the doctor, did they give you any information as to what to do next, anything like that? No, ma'am. They just told me to stop taking the medication that the hospital provided me with. Okay. So you remember that part? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else that you were told that you remember? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you understand why you had to stop taking that medication? Um, not fully, but... Not fully. Okay. Do you now realize why you were told to stop? Yes, ma'am. But after everything was presented to the jury and the court, and after everything was said and done, Alexis was supposed to be facing around 15 years in prison, and she ended up getting sentenced to house arrest. That's it. Just house arrest. 
What? She wasn't allowed to leave home unless it was for school, work, or any sort of medical appointment, and she was also not allowed to have any contact with her child, her child's father, or his family, or any other man besides the men that lives in her home. As far as the aftermath of everything, Alexis's mother, Martha, would eventually come out to the press and say that she truly didn't know that Alexis was pregnant, and that when she found out that Alexis had given birth, Earth, it was a huge surprise to her. She says that not only was it a surprise to her, but it was also a shock to the entire family because Alexis had kept this a secret from everyone. But Martha, in the end, says that she believes Alexis's story and she believes that Alexis didn't know she was pregnant and she puts off what Alexis did as, quote, everyone makes mistakes when they're scared. But in my opinion, I think people's true colors come out when they're scared. I mean, if you look at the security footage of when her baby was found by April Meadows, immediately when April found that baby, she started taking care of him. She started wiping him off and trying to cradle him and keep him warm and immediately call the police. These group of strangers had shown so much more love to this baby that they didn't even know versus a Alexis, who was the mother of this child and literally treated her baby like trash. Alexis didn't want her baby and so she just got rid of her baby in the easiest way she could think of. And once again, I truly believe that if Alexis was never caught, like if there was no security cameras behind that dumpster, she would have never told anyone. She would have never went to the police. She would have just rode past it and felt like she got away with it and continued on with her life. And that kind of person, in my opinion, is not the type of person that should just be walking around with free will. Stephen, of course, after all of this was made aware of the baby and Stephen would actually go on to say in the trial that he found out that Alexis was pregnant back in August and they were planning on raising the baby together before Alexis had told him right before they had broken up that she unfortunately had a miscarriage. The entire pregnancy, Alexis had kept it a secret from Stephen because Stephen Stephen was under the impression that she had a miscarriage. But immediately when Stephen's family found out about Stephen's child and what Alexis had done, Stephen decided to step up and be a father to this baby boy. So Stephen and his family had claimed full custody over this baby boy and named him Saul. And Saul was staying at the Lubbock's hospital in Texas for months before he was finally brought home. And as for today in 2024, the Astorga family still has custody of Saul. Saul is nearly two years old and he is living very happily and healthy with the Astorga family. And that to me is so incredible because there is so much care that goes into a child after they are born. A newborn baby like that needs so much care and attention and there's so many safety precautions that go into treating a newborn child. And Saul did not receive any of that. He was put in a dumpster for hours before being found. And I feel like most newborn babies being so weak and fragile would have passed away. He was still alive for hours after he was put into this dumpster. And even furthermore, he went to the hospital and survived. And that to me, honestly, is a miracle. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like that's such an incredible blessing and, and so beautiful beautiful to hear. After the fact, Alexis's friends would also come out to say that Alexis definitely knew she was pregnant because she told everyone that she was pregnant. She told all of her friends that she was pregnant. She was super open about it and she was super open about not wanting her baby. A lot of people at Alexis's school said that the whole school basically knew that Alexis was pregnant. And as for today in 2024, Alexis is still on house arrest. So even to this day, she is still out and about. She's going to school. She's going to work. She can talk to whoever she wants. She can do whatever she wants. She can eat whatever she wants. She can basically still do whatever she wants. She's simply just on quarantine right now. Like she is receiving no consequences. And although she is currently on house arrest, she is actually awaiting a retrial to which in this retrial, she could be facing up to 16 years. And yeah, that is the end of today's case. If you guys found this case interesting, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Or if you are listening on Spotify,
Spotify, Apple, wherever you can find podcasts. Make sure to rate it five stars because that really helps me out a lot. Today's case was very frustrating. It was overwhelming. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions about it in the comments below. And yeah, that is all for me. Again, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to be safe out there. Go outside today, get some sunlight. The sun is finally staying out longer, which I am loving. So make sure to soak in as much of that sun as you can. Make sure to drink some water today, okay? Stay hydrated. And as always, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.